Today I would like to share, let me use the term briefly, <laughs> from um, a topic entitled The Blessing of Fruitfulness and Multiplication. The Blessing of Fruitfulness and Multiplication. And as um, you all know, our theme this year has been and is divine enlargement through outreach. Amen? Amen? The theme for year 2023, we have focused on divine enlargement through outreach. And outreach we are going to do. Outreach we are doing. We will continue to do. Even next year, we'll continue to do outreach. Even when the Lord leads us in a different way, outreach is what is on the heart of the Father. Hmm? Outreach, reaching out to people, going out to every, uh, reaching, reaching out to every nation and people of all tribes, all types of people, that is what is on the heart of the Father. When you do that, you please the Father, Almighty God. Amen. So uh, let's turn to our theme scripture, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 3. We'll start with that, and then we'll move into other areas. Remember, put at the back of your mind, the topic today is the blessing of fruitfulness and multiplication. Isaiah chapter 54, we are reading from verse 1 to 3. If you get time, go and read the whole chapter and um, you will get the whole context. Hallelujah. Sing, O barren, you who have borne, who have not borne, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Hallelujah. Amen. This is um, a message or a command to somebody who has been barren, or to people who have been barren. They have not been fruitful. They have not been productive. They have not shown anything to show that they are alive, hmm? that they are um, um, doing anything to bring forth on this earth. In, in other words, their lives are dry. Okay? So God commands the barren woman or the barren women, eh? the barren women and the barren men to do three things. How many things? Three things. We find that in verse 1. Verse 1, we are told they are commanded to arise, to sing and rejoice aloud. Hmm? Sing and rejoice aloud. You know, people who are not productive, people who feel like they are poor, they are um, um, disregarded, they are um, uh, downcast, whatever it is, feel very discouraged and they do not rejoice. Even when people are rejoicing, they are feeling, what are they rejoicing about? What is there for me to rejoice about? Okay? They are wondering what to do. But here he says, 
sing and rejoice aloud. Mm. <laughs> he is commanding eh? all people who are disappointed, people who are discouraged, arise and sing. Eh? Let the weak say they are. Strong. Let the sick say they are. Amen. Let the poor say they are. Amen. Amen. That's the confession of God's children. Amen. So he says, in, in other words, when he talks about you know, singing and uh, rejoicing aloud, he's talking about us arising and starting to celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Ametenda maku. Maku. Ametenda maku. Maku. E. <laughs> That's what he's calling us upon to do. Hmm? Regardless of how you are feeling in your heart, arise and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because they are going to be very fruitful that their children are going to be more than the children of those mothers who have given birth already. Huh? Those women who are already mothers. The Lord is challenging each one of us and saying even if we feel disappointed and discouraged because we have not been productive, we cannot show anything. Huh? He is saying you celebrate because he is a miracle working God. If he raised Lazarus, who had been in the grave, dead, dead, four days in the grave, buried and forgotten, hmm? Jesus appeared and he raised him to life. What can he do? If he parted the Red Sea, Huh? and his children walked on dry ground. If he parted the uh, river Jordan when it was already flooded and his children crossed on dry ground, what can he do? Amen. Amen. So stand up and rejoice because you are going to be very, very fruitful. Amen. In verse 2, he challenges this um, woman or these women and these men eh, to enlarge the place of their tent. Hmm? Don't just stay there. Enlarge the place of your tent. And we're saying, I think, in the beginning of the year, hmm? prepare yourself. If you are living in one room, prepare yourself because you are going to expand, that room will no longer be comfortable for you and for anyone else. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me and saying, but you know, for me, I can only afford one room. The Lord is going to expand you. Amen. 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 Huh? You know, what you have in one room is little space. And that little space will not allow you to do things that other people are doing who have two rooms, three rooms, and whatever, even those who have mansions. Okay? So, you prepare yourself. Arise and start planning to have more things to occupy two rooms, three rooms, four rooms. You say, I can only afford this. Who said that your income will remain the same the rest of your life? Who told you that if you are living in one room or in a bed sitter or in a one-bedroom um, apartment eh, or flat, that that is your destiny? That all the rest of your life, you will be there. 
Huh? No, it is not so. We will, we will grow. Yes. Growing, we will grow. Yes. Amen. The Lord has promised us. And he is challenging us, commanding us to arise. Let us start testifying. Let us start, you know, I, I, I always tell people, when I pray for you, you are looking for a job, okay? You are looking for a job, and we pray together. When you leave that place after we have prayed, don't go saying you are jobless. Hmm? Never say again, I am jobless. When you leave that place, say, I'm employed, I'm waiting for the appointment letter to tell me when, where, to report, and the terms. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's what I, and when to report. Hmm? Where, when, all those things. Amen. I'm just waiting for that letter. I'm employed, I'm employed. Where? I'm, em I'm waiting for the letter. I will tell you whether I'm reporting in Nakuru, I'm reporting in uh, New York, I'm reporting in um, uh, Sydney, or I'm reporting in Nenteve. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Don't go cancelling the prayers that we have offered. When you say you are looking for a house, eh, those of you who feel you, have, you are in small houses, whatever, it is a small dwelling units, start saying, I'm waiting for the key. I'm just waiting for the key Amen. to open that mansion. Amen. 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 Where the rent will come from, it is him who knows. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. He says, enlarge the place of your tent because they are going. You know, he, he wants us to do that because we are going to multiply and our descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities habitable. That's verse 2. Is it in your Bible? Huh? You start enlarging the place of your tent. Hmm? If you have that one room, start, you know, a clearing room. Start clearing room to expand, to move that knee, that wall. Hmm? <laughs> Because the next room is waiting for you. Eh? Your neighbor is moving out so that you can occupy the two. Okay? If you are in, if you are in a, you know, single dwelling units, your neighbor is moving out for your sake. The Lord is doing it. Your neighbor will move out and you will occupy the two rooms. One will be the sitting and dining and the cooking and the other one will be the bedroom. Amen. Amen. Believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The third one. Hmm? What was the first one? Why should we rejoice when we are so downcast? <laughs> Our children are going to be many. Amen. And you know, they are going to be more than the, we, the, the children of the woman that has children today. Amen. And number two was? Why should we enlarge our tents? Our descendants will multi, we are going to multiply and our descendants are going to inherit. Hmm? There are people who are occupying the office that you are supposed to be in. Huh? The wealth, there are people who are um, sitting on the property that you are supposed to be owning. There are people who are enjoying facilities that you, that has been predestined for you. Can you, are you hearing what I'm talking about? And we are promised that we will dwell in homes and houses we did not build. We are promised. We are going to eat of the vineyards that we did not plant. Amen? 
by that does not mean that you know you go and chase away um, uh, the, the, <laughs> the the owners of those houses. Uh, you, you 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 throw tear gas at them. They run away. Then you come and steal the need the gas cylinders and park in your. Huh? No 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 no. We are not talking about that. We are not talking about that. We are talking about us. You know, growing and possessing. Huh? Growing in purity, growing in um, every way, and uh, you know, yes. Number three. Huh? He, God is commanding that we expand to the right and to the left. Why? Because we are going to be so productive, hallelujah, that our descendants will be mighty in the land. And when they are mighty in the land, they are going to do exploits. Hmm? We will, you know, be so productive, so fruitful, huh? that, you know, our descendants are going to, you know, the, our descendants and their offspring, huh? our children's 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 children. They will multiply and they will do great exploits in the land. Hmm? Our descendants will cause revival and bring, you know, a transformation in the land, wherever they are, wherever they go. They will bring revival and or they will take with them revival and transformation. Our descendants and their offspring. Hallelujah. That's a good prophecy. Say, my descendants and their offspring shall be mighty in the land and they will do exploits. Their descendants will cause revival and bring transformation wherever they are planted. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are talking of um, us saying like, you know, it was said of David that David served the Lord in his generation. So each one of us, it should be said of us that, what's your name? Florence. Yeah, Florence. <laughs> Thank you, Florence, you are sharp. <laughs> What's your name? The Served the Lord yes. in his or her generation. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Be sharp like Florence. Don't doze in church. Yes. Hmm? Hmm? Don't be dozy-dozy and hazy-hazy. Hmm? Now, when we talk about enlargement, you know, he's talk, the Lord is talking about enlargement. When we talk about enlargement, we are talking of something that is very important. You know, enlargement is a product of blessing. Hmm? Enlargement is a product of blessing or a product of being blessed. Hmm? When you are enlarged, you can only be enlarged when you have been blessed or when God has blessed you. So to be enlarged or to enlarge means to grow. Hmm? When we are blessed, we grow. The evidence of growth is enlargement. Moving from one level to a higher one. That is enlargement that is growth. Amen? Amen? We grow from being good at a given thing to being better in that sphere. Amen? Amen. If it is um, uh, career-wise, 
you are growing, you are learning more, you are um, improving on your, your, yourself, you are um, uh, doing that which helps you to grow in that sphere or that line or that career. Amen. Amen. So we are moving from one level to another, to another, to another, going higher and higher, not diminishing. Hmm? And you should know one thing, you can write it down. If you are not growing, if you are not growing, you are dying. <laughs> hmm? If you are not growing, you are dying. If you are not improving, you are deproving. <laughs> eh? If you are not going forward, you are going backwards. Okay? So, we were born to keep growing. Each and every day, you are growing. Eh? You are growing older. Hmm? Okay? I'm almost 70 years young, but I'm growing older each and every day. Hmm? If you looked at me 50 years ago, I didn't look this way. <laughs> 50 years ago, every lady wanted to associate themselves with Wojambo. <laughs> every lady around, eh? they wanted to associate themselves with Wojambo. They wanted to at least to make sure that, you know, they have shaken Wojambo's hand, you know. Yeah, just to be seen, you know, shaking Wojambo's hand. Hmm? But, you know, I'm growing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> when God blesses you, you show it by fruitfulness. Hmm? You show it by growth. You show it by productivity. You show it by multiplication in all areas of your life. Hallelujah. Hmm? When you are blessed, you are productive. You are fruitful. You grow, you grow, you grow. Hmm? You are not the same size eh, as when you were one year old. When you are five years old, you are not the same size. If somebody is born and they grow up to five years and 20 years later they are the same size, wearing the same shoe, the same number, hmm? if it's a shirt, if it's a skirt, if it's a dress, same size. Huh? If it's a jacket, the same one as they were five years. Something is not right somewhere. Hmm? Okay? Something is not right somewhere. It's only the children of Israel who wore the same clothes and wore the same shoes because God performed a miracle in the desert. There were no hides, there were no places to make clothes, so God made sure that their clothes grew with them, their shoes grew with them, their sandals, whatever it is. So if you are size knee, size 4, and you are now size 10, you are still fitting in that shoe. Na haikufini. Okay? God performed a miracle in the desert. But you know, when miracles were performed in the desert, okay, those miracles that were performed in the desert were not performed in the promised land. 
He provided manna in the desert. But the moment they got into the promised land, it ceased. He told them now, take your jambes, go to the shamba, and till the land. Okay? Amen. Amen. So, don't go to these fellows who go around, you know, telling you, I prophesy over you. Edel Yakim, tomorrow you'll be a billionaire. <laughs> hmm? And tomorrow you'll have five cars. And you say, I receive. Uh uh. Cars and you know, billions are not made by, you know, people shouting. Hmm? You go to the marketplace and make money. Amen? Amen. You go and work. Hmm? That which was in the desert, don't expect it in the promised land. Amen. Amen. Don't go listening to these fellows who go, you know, conning people and whatever it is. Go and come and plant a seed here. Eh? Plant a seed of uh, whatever, so much money. And uh, in 90 days, you will have whatever. Nonsense. You don't plant seed that way. Hmm? If you want to prosper, pay your tithes. And he is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Eh? Those fellows who come borrowing from you with no intention of paying, he'll keep them away. They'll not even see you. They'll look at Jeremiah and not see him. Hmm? And they'll look for somebody else who is not tithing. And they will come to you and tell you, you know what? Lend me money. At five o'clock, I'll return to you. <laughs> hmm? And they know very well, even next, next year, they won't be thinking of returning to you. Mm -mm. So, he will rebuke the devourer. The ones who, that need the demons that bring sickness and whatnot and all kinds of things to fleece your money, he will block them. He will keep sickness and disease away from you. Yeah. He will keep, you know, robbers and thieves from you, away from you. Yeah. He will rebuke the devourer. Yes. Hmm? Amen? Amen? And he, he said, after rebuking the devourer, he will pour a blessing upon you yes. that you will have no room to, to keep that riches. You will now, you will start, you know, um, spreading it and sharing with others, eh? telling them, you know, Sister Sando, keep this uh, five million for me. Hmm? If I need a business, I'll, I'll, I'll come for it when I need it. When I need it, I'll come for it. Uh, Sister Mungala, you know, this ten million, just, you know, uh, do business with it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eh? And no, no interest. I wrote it my, I just come for my 10 million. <laughs> so whatever you, you have gotten out of the 10 million where, where you invested it, that's yours. Amen. E. Be, why? Because somebody is blessed and he's prospered. In Genesis um, chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Hmm? We have, you know, the first family. Hmm? The first family on earth. Adam and Eve. From verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing <clears throat> that creeps on the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing 
that moves on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. These are great commands. And, um, you know, authority and power is given to the human race. Can you imagine? What was given to Adam was passed on to all bin Adams. <laughs> Have you heard of bin Adams? Huh? The offspring of Adam. Bin Adam. Hmm? Adam and Eve were blessed by God at creation. And they were commanded. Hmm? He commanded them to do certain things. One was to multiply. And when we talk about multiplying, first of all, first of all to be fruitful. First of all, to be fruitful, yes. Eh? You start with fruitfulness. Be fruitful. So when we talk about fruitfulness, we are talking about producing good and helpful results. Tell your neighbor, are you productive? Are you fruitful? Are you sure you are producing good and helpful results? <laughs> good and helpful results. You're not just producing results. Yeah? You know the results you could be producing could be equivalent to an E. Yeah? It's a result, isn't it? In an exam. A is, an, is a result. A minus is a result, B plus is a result, B is a result, B minus is a result, C plus is a result, C is a result, C minus is a result, D plus is a result, D is a result, D minus is a result, and even E is a result. You wrote an exam and you got an E which the Swahili say, A. <laughs> In other words, you, 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 the, your result means you are educated. <laughs> okay? Make sure that the results that you are producing or you are showing are good and helpful. That's when you, you can say, I am fruitful. Amen? The second thing they are commanded to do is to multiply. Mm -hmm. To multiply is to replic replicate and become more of you. Mm -hmm. You are one. When you multiply, you become two, three, four, five, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. For very many years, huh, there was one Wojambo. A time came, they became two. A time came, later on, they became three. A time came, they became four. Amen? Amen. And the time is coming, there will be very many. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, replicate. Eh? Have more wajambos. Make more wajambos of yourself. Mm? And you know, um, <laughs> there, was, there was one wajambo many years ago when City Church began. And um, almost every Sunday, it would be him to preach. Eh? But nowadays, wajambo preaches hardly... <laughs> <laughs> there are so many wajambos eh, who are preaching, you know, all over in many, 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 many forums. Every day, every day, two, three times people are preaching. Wajambos are preaching. Eh? Every week people are preaching. Every Sunday, wajambo is seated there and wajambo is preaching up here. Eh? Hallelujah. E. It's a, 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 it's a,
who sometimes makes me laugh. He says he came in as a knee, as a, as what? As a, as a, a son in law. <laughs> and then he became a son <laughs> in the family. He did not remain a son in law. He, he came in as a son in law many years ago. Nowadays he's a son. Eh? And you know, a city church and uh, Elenyandiko are the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, replicate yourself. Multiply. Become many of yourself. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Become many. Become many. The people who can do what you are doing. Eh? And sometimes they can even do it better. Eh? When you are there and you feel, yes, that's right. Hmm? You know, these days, you know, I, I don't need struggle with these things, need technology. It mm. was a long time ago when my people were young. These days, I just tell them, I want this done, that, that done. Mm. And they say, yes, sir, it is, count it done. And it's done. Hallelujah. Yeah. Huh? Your Excellency, it is done. Mm. And they give me a report. Check, you know, check your email. Or check your WhatsApp and I see, oh yeah. How did they do this thing? It was giving me a headache. Why? Because I've multiplied myself. Mm. See, I paid fees. What was the university? I was going to Java. I was going to Java. Those hundreds of <laughs> those hundreds of thousands we paid eh, for people to go to the university and the like. Ah, multiply yourself, okay? Make sure that you are multiplying yourself. Tell your neighbor, multiply yourself. Multiply yourself. Don't, remain Don't remain alone. He told them, replenish the earth. Hmm? Replenish the earth. When we talk about replenishing the earth, we are talking about refilling. Huh? Something was spent. Something was used up. So, replenish. Ni kama chai ya kuchoma. Ugali sosa. You know, you, 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 you are given tea. You take your tea. Then you say, ah, choma bwana. Huh? Choma means, you know, add, you know, make it hotter. Hmm? <laughs> it, it, was, it was halfway. Eh? As you were sipping, uh, it was getting colder and colder, like in this weather, hmm? these days. You take, you know, when it's about a quarter way, you say, um, fill for me. But you know, I'm still on the same first cup, okay? I've taken one cup, but you may have filled it three, four times. Mm, but I've taken only one cup. We are counting one. When I finish like that, then you put another, that will be the second one. Then you start chomering again. Mm. So that's what we mean by replenishing. Mm. When we talk about replenishing, we are talking about refilling or filling the earth. The earth had become desolate. The earth had been destroyed. Now refill it hmm? with that which is needed to be there. Amen. Amen. We need to replenish city church and fill all these chairs. Amen. There was a time city church was 1,500 people. Amen? Amen. But we moved and moved and moved and moved and moved and moved. And then opened other congregations and people, we took some there, some there, some there, whatever it is. Eh? And whenever we moved, we lost a third. We lost. <laughs> Human beings are very humorous. Hmm? If you move this church from here to the road, Hobo House, a third will disappear. And the excuse will be, we don't know where, where a city church moved to. <laughs> but the good thing is that you know, they go and multiply wherever they have gone because they have been taught. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. 
Then, you know, there is something also, the, the, the last thing they were told was to do what? Subdue it. Subdue the earth. Hmm? When we talk about subduing, we are talking of um, having full control of everything going on around you. Subduing. Hmm? When you subdue um, the, 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 the security guys say we have subdued the criminal. Eh? The criminal who was shooting and whatever and uh, doing whatever he was doing and uh, boxing people and kicking. When he is arrested and his hands are tied and his feet are tied eh? and the feet and the hands are tied together, hmm? they say we have subdued. He cannot kick anymore. He cannot box anymore. He cannot move anymore. Hmm? There is a way the security guys, you know, will hold your hand. And when they hold your hand this way, <laughs> you either submit or you are going to suffer a lot. Hmm? Just this way. Huh? If somebody holds your hand this way, don't go, you know, struggling. Hmm? You will get a fracture and you will suffer for a long time. So, we are commanded. Adam and Eve were commanded. And even when you go to um, Genesis chapter 9, I think it's verse 1, yeah, you will find that even Noah and his children were given this same command. You remember there was a time every human being, every creature, <clears throat> on earth was destroyed by the flood. Then, you know, God had only Noah, his wife, his sons, and I think their wives. Okay? And he said, okay, you get out now. Genesis chapter 9. Go. You multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. He gave them the same command. Okay? So we are offspring of who? Who, are, who was an offspring of? All right. We are still the offspring of, of Adam. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God blessed mankind and commanded them. Hmm? This commanding, he gave them, you know, the commanding, the empowering strength to do that which was supposed to be done to be fruitful and to multiply. What does it um, mean when God says, be fruitful and multiply? To be fruitful is to have the power to grow. To have the power to grow and be productive by replicating yourself. I repeat, for those of you who are taking notes, to be fruitful is to have the power to grow and be productive by replicating yourself. Amen. We always produce after our kind. So you are commanded to do what? To Produce after your own kind. Engineering lecturers produce who? Engineers. What about crop scientists? They, they, <laughs> they produce mechanics. <laughs> Drivers. What? They produce crop scientists. Evangelists produce? Hallelujah. Hmm? So, you know, you do not find when you go under a mango tree, a mango tree that is productive, you don't find orange, or orange fruits there. Do you? No. The fruits don't fall far away from their mother tree. They just fall there. Hmm? If you find oranges under a mango tree, Somebody else carried oranges from somewhere and placed them there. They are not the offspring of this tree. 
this mango tree. Amen? Amen. So, <laughs> as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Hmm? The way you are, the ministry, the gifting that God has given you, you must reproduce. If you stay in a given place and you do not reproduce yourself so that people are doing that which you are doing, pastor, if you don't reproduce and you get more pastors in uh, Crisco City Church, we know where the problem is. Amen? If you do not reproduce yourself, eh? elders, eh? when you become, you'll soon become pastors. Okay? Soon you'll become pastors. Let me prophesy over your lives. Hallelujah. You'll soon become pastors. So when, when you become pastors, who will be doing your duties of, of elders, eldership now? <laughs> you must make sure you have raised other people. Amen? Amen? If you do not produce after your own kind, there is a problem. And everybody knows where the problem is. Hmm? If your lecturers huh, cause, uh, you know, in, 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 in um, a given department, huh, in a given faculty, you have only 2% or 3% Graduating. <laughs> eh? And money has been spent. Things have been done. What will happen eh? to the lecturers who, who are lecturing to these people? The HOD. What will happen? I, if, if, if I'm the CEO of that institution, I will write letters. Hmm? I'll write letters for people to show cause why they should not uh, be stopped from entering that gate. Hmm? So that when they come in, they are coming in as uh, visitors. One time, you know, we went with the prof uh, somewhere. And um, when we got to the gate, uh, they said, you know, are you members of staff or are you visitors? And since he, me, he is the one who was me, who was in charge. I let him to speak. So he said, you know, we are coming in as visitors, but when we get out, we'll be staff. <laughs> you remember in Kibabi? <laughs> we are now coming in, right now we are coming in, you register us as visitors. But when we have already gotten there where we are going, the offices we are going to, when we come out, will not be visitors again. Amen. When we come back, we'll not be visitors. Amen. So, reproduce yourself. Amen. <clears throat> be fruitful. You are either, you know, if you don't reproduce yourself, something is wrong, as we said. You are either selfish, hmm, or you are, um, um, you, 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 have, you have set the standard so high that no one, including yourself, can attain it. So now, what, what, of, of, what, of what use is it? Hmm? Make sure that you do that which is required of you. Why am I saying so? Jesus did not set the standard so high that nobody could attain. Huh? He bore with everybody that was around him. When he found prostitutes, he ministered to them and they got saved. Demon possessed like Mary Magdalene were delivered and they came in. Uh, tax collectors like, um, uh, what was his name? Eh? Matthew and um, the, other, the other fellow who climbed on the tree was <clears throat> Zacchaeus. All of them, you know, they um, were brought in. Eh? Matthew was made a disciple. Amen. Amen. The Pharisees had, you know, disregarded them. But when Jesus came, he said, bring these people here. Hmm? He didn't set a son so high that you must have been through um, 
uh, the school of the Pharisees and you have attained this uh, uh, professorship and this doctorate in uh, theology for you to become my disciple. No. He picked the fisherman. Hmm? He picked a politician called Dr. Luke. He picked um, uh, tax collectors huh? and he brought them. Amen. Amen. Don't set the standard so high. Don't be a perfectionist. Huh? Perfection is only in heaven. Here, we are striving to be perfect. Amen? Amen. Don't expect other people to be perfect when you yourself are not perfect. And if you find a perfect church, please, my brother, my sister, don't join it. Because you are going to defile it. Reason being, you are not perfect. Amen. Mm. So don't be selfish. He gave them power mm, to do that which they were supposed to do, to multiply. He gave them power to uh, replenish the earth. He gave them power to move mm, and uh, be fruitful in this land, in, or let me say, on the earth. And you know, power, the meaning of power is to have the ability, hmm, to have the ability to manipulate and control results. That is power. Hmm? That is what? Power. Huh? The ability to manipulate and control results so that everything is going and the results are coming according to the book. <laughs> huh? The way scientists hmm, um, say they are doing research. But somebody somewhere, huh, in sometimes, sometimes like in the medical field, somebody somewhere funds that research, but he wants the results to come out this way. Hmm? You do all that you are doing, but give us <laughs> this kind of results. <laughs> That's what they want. Hmm? So, <laughs> as we see in Genesis chapter 1, God gave a mandate of, to the humans to fulfill, need to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over all living creatures, subdue them. When we talk about dominion, we are talking of having the ability to subdue the forces around you, subdue the earth. That's why hmm, you, 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 you find me um, in, a Genesis, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 2, we are told that, you know, all the living creatures will fear human beings. Do you know that when lions see human beings, they run away? Yeah? When lions see human beings, they run away. They are the king of the jungle. But when a human being arrives, <laughs> lions, <laughs> they look at each other and take off. They give way for the human being to pass. Okay? All, even snakes, be it a python, anaconda, black mamba, green mamba, when they see a human being, They know danger is coming. They fear. All creatures fear human beings and they will fear you. So wherever you go, all the demons, all the principalities and powers of darkness must fear you. Yeah. If they don't, there is a problem. Hmm? I will give you um, a story as I finish. There was... Um, um, a minister of the gospel that went to a certain place, I think in Nigeria. Hmm? It was in Nigeria. He went there and he wanted land to put up a mission, mission center. So the chief said, yeah, yeah, we'll give you land. We'll give you, you want to put up a church? Yeah, yeah we'll give you land. Then they, he, he gave them land where um, 
I think that land was cast or something like that. Demons were there. Demons were living there. People who went there never came back. So he said, I've given you that land, 50 acres. Hmm? So this minister prayed and took his team. And they went. When they got to the area, what they said, what the, the man of God said was, let God arise and all his enemies be scattered. And the story goes that, no, when he said that, let God arise and all his enemies be scattered, they heard noises. Like people are running. In the bush, in the forest, people are running away. And they went and fenced the land, the 50 acres. And they put up a mission. The chief waited to hear these people died. They came back and said, we have fenced the land. Fence which land? <laughs> the land that you gave us. So he sent his people to go and check. And they found actually the place was fenced. Hmm? When you are blessed of the Lord, you have authority. Yes. You will command all principalities and powers and they will run away. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. May the Lord help each one of us that we be fruitful. We may arise. We may do that which the Lord has commanded us to do. Let us be fruitful in our lives. Let us multiply. Let us replenish. Let us subdue or have dominion over the earth and everything that is in it. All the principalities and powers be subdued under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ that is resident in us. Stand up, let us pray. I want you to pray after me. Almighty God, I come to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you forgive me for all my sins and transform me. Father, I am tired of going around this mountain and not making progress in life. Help me to increase in my prayer life in my Bible study level, in soul winning and ministry. Help me, Lord, to enlarge my place of my, the place of my tent. Enlarge my congregation and all areas of my life. Make me more fruitful. Make me to multiply so that nothing in me remains small. Bless me, O oh Lord, as you blessed Adam. Bless me as you blessed um, uh, Noah. Bless me as you blessed Jabez. Bless my congregation and all those connected to her. Bless my descendants and their offspring to be fruitful, to multiply, to multiply, to multiply, to multiply, and subdue every situation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ I pray Amen and Amen God bless you Hallelujah